subject of this new session. Uh, we have here uh, the presentation. Can you see the presentation on your screens? Very good. Excellent. Uh, this is our session for today. Uh, we're going to be looking at the activities that happened during the first week of the course. Uh, we're going to go and review some tips about the daily messages, uh, the presentations that we have on the course, the discussion forums, the questions and the comments. Uh, we're going to look at also at how we're going to be in the process of grading at the participation in the forums. And we'll also look at the first exercise of that week and the process of grading the exercise and sending feedback to the students. And at the end, uh, you're going to have some exercise and, uh, that you can do later in the system about grading and, and exercise and, and post the course. Are there any questions from yesterday? I posted the videos and I gave you some, uh, some additional links to the information that we have in the course. No questions? Very good. It's a great class. I like it. <laughs> no questions. Okay, uh, we have on the first week of our activities these five elements. Uh, three of those we know they are the presentations. Those are the video presentations on the three lessons of the course. The cycle of the DME with the concept, the design, and the planning phases. There is a discussion forum and then the exercise and a special folder where we post some additional reference material that during that week we can point to the students if they need to uh, find out more detail about specific areas. Both the Spanish and the English version have that. Uh, they are not necessarily the same. We try to find uh, the same versions of the most important documents that are relevant to the material that is presented in the course. Uh, but in some cases it's difficult, so there will be some differences between the English and the Spanish version, but at least they have what they need in case they need more information or more detail about a specific elements. What we have on the presentation videos, as you all know, these are simple videos that basically provide the students with some of the basic concepts, some of the ideas, the terminology. I'm going to show you now the site on the course and on the course site we have the session module 1 and let me share that Can you see the course page now? Very good. That is the first module on our uh, course, the analysis, design, and planning, the first three first phases. And these are the three presentations. Again, the presentations, they are not uh, graded. Uh, we all want just the students to have the opportunity to look at that information. It's a simple process. They have to the right they have the table of contents so they can skip, go back and review those videos at any time. Uh, most of the videos are around 7 to 10, maybe 12 minutes long. The idea is that it's just a, a presentation with some concepts that are part of the general understandings of design, monitoring and evaluation. That is the basics in terms that they will be able to understand some of those concepts and then later they will use those concepts to apply their knowledge and start the discussion forums. And what is important is that based on what they discover or learn and even the additional uh, reference materials, they will be in a position to start answering some of those questions. So we have those videos and they are part of, in a sense, the reference material that that the students will be able to, to have for the course. Now, let's go back and let me show you the what we have in terms of the discussion forums. 
As a facilitator of the course, your responsibility is to post a question from a list of questions that we have worked. So there are about three questions that you can use during that week. You also need to provide feedback to the answers from all the students. And the feedback comes in two ways. One, you, you rate each answer using the star system grade. And I'll show you the, the application of, the, of a forum rubric that will help you identify how to rate those posts. And also provide comments. You can provide comments directly to somebody's post by giving them some feedback. Here's the screenshot of some of the discussion forum that we have in the previous course. So I posted a question. I tried to put some background, some, some context to the discussion forum so that people understand why we're asking that question. And then there's a one simple question that we have that. And then people will have the opportunity to think about what they learn from the presentations look at the questions and based on their best understanding try to post the answer so people will start answering that question and that's when you start then reviewing and giving them a rating to that answer i'm going to go back to the site where we can then look at the discussion forums that will be the discussion forums on the course number one here it is, our discussion forum from last year. And you can see that we can create three questions. I'm going to look at the first one where we had the 29 replies. And people will start answering those questions. So your role as a facilitator is whenever you see the first two, three, four posts, try to give them an immediate feedback. That creates an environment where people say, well, it is active, the forum is, is moving. So your, your feedback could be simple in terms of just ensuring that they made a good answer, uh, maybe uh, recapping some of the concepts that they explain or giving them a little bit of the guidelines or guidance in terms of how that answer can be improved. And then you have the opportunity to rate those answers based on what you think a uh, five star will be excellent meaning that not only they provided the correct answer but they give you something more and, and that's important when we start discussing later on the rubric how we rate these answers uh, four means that yeah it's very good it's a very good answer it's complete it's everything that we asked for uh, three star is good it, is, it means that yes you responded it may be a little bit limited or not, not that complete Two and one means that the answer is not complete and it's a wrong answer or they didn't do it. Most of the time, you know, you will not need to do uh, a two and ones. I never had that situation unless they respond a, a one sentence. If that happens, uh, my recommendation is to contact uh, with a personal email to that student to let them know that they can improve, that we're trying to, uh, that, that they should follow some of the instructions that they have in the forums that their question should be a little bit more explanatory and, and expand their understanding of the question and providing a better answer. So they can do it again and then they have an opportunity to rate it. So you don't need to put that, that bad grade at the beginning, but you give them a chance. Another role that you have during the course is that in many cases you are going to be providing them with additional information. So you say, hey, Thank you, everybody. That was a good answer. I like your discussions. And you can provide them either a link or a chart or a diagram, or something that then relates back to the concept of what is being discussed and the idea of what the questions is trying to get from students. We, in this first question, when we are discussing about the need for a project concept, why it's important for the project concept, then a lot of the ideas that come back is that it helps the organization align their projects to the strategy so they are supported and that is one of the key elements of management for results that every project that we are in and that we're doing for the organization they might be coming from different donors in a sense they need to be supporting also the strategic framework of the organization meaning they support the long-term strategic visions and the goals the organization is trying to reach with a specific region or country 
and that's important that the project concept helps identify early enough those issues so that there is opportunity before committing to a full-blown proposal and using all those all of those resources that there is a, a process to review that concept a process to make sure that all the risks and the challenges are are identified and that the organization is in the position to support that project many times uh, because of the timing or the or the or trying to rush to develop a proposal we skip that that step and then we find out that we're having problems because the, there is not enough resources or skills or availability or funds that the organization could commit to support that project. So that is the environment in terms of you roll out facilitators during the discussion forums. You see the questions, you provide them some feedback in terms of many times also you can add additional questions during the discussion forums. Maybe you find that people are having a challenge trying to dis to distinguish between a project concept and a project proposal and then you provide some additional guidance or you ask them additional questions what would happen if if a project doesn't have a good analysis of a project concept or what would happen in situations that are special where you don't need a project concept so you keep the forum engaged in the discussions um, you're always going to find uh, in the discussion somebody who gets it, who has a good answer. And then at the end of your discussions, you can also summarize some of those uh, good points uh, from everybody by trying to recap the main uh, concepts that we're learning in this discussion forum. So this is an opportunity also that people who have a good idea they have a, a, a good grasp of what is the concept that we're trying to discuss during the forums and then you provide them with some of that feedback you give them some some reassurance you highlight the good points they're making and everybody in the in the in the group will be able so here's for example my my summary in terms of what everybody did some additional benefits of the project concept and that way you can use it uh, when you begin your first course, uh, something that I recommend is that you will have access to this old course so that when you're working on, the, on a new course and you start working on some of the discussions, you can use some of this information, go back to the old course, and then you can find some of these uh, comments just to give you an idea how you can answer the or how you can provide feedback or additional comments to your course. So this becomes kind of a a library of, of answers that we have available in the system that you can use and as you start making more courses you're going to be building that that list of possible answers additional comments or a list of ideas or even links that are available and you create your own uh, trainers library of information that you can use in future courses at the end, everybody will have their questions, they will be able to post their answers, and you will have the responsibility to grade all of them. What happens during the week is that also there is a need to remind people about what is happening in the discussion forums. Uh, that, that is why every day in the morning and in the afternoon, I sometimes have the, the, the practice of using the news forum. So at the beginning of the day, Early in the morning, when everybody is kind of ready to get their their work material, I will send them uh, a message. Like in the discussion forum, I will send them, "Hello class, we're starting with the first forum. We have some good answers. Please join us. Some of your colleagues are answering, and we have a good uh, environment for discussions that will will benefit everybody. So that is an opportunity to use the the a news forum to communicate people at early in the morning so they have some motivations to go log in into the course see the discussion forums and participate in that exchange of answers and ideas like i said before they you could have in the discussion forum uh, between two or three questions that you can post you can start with one and then later maybe on Tuesday you start with the first one, maybe Wednesday you get the second one, and, th and on Friday the third one. 
depends on how you see the process flowing. I'm going to share with you now the list that we have for the discussions and the questions that we can post on the forum. This is the first question and, this, and you can start with how do you see the logical framework guiding the implementation and monitoring of the project? So you post that question and below are the kind of guidelines that you can use to help you answer that question. So people are needing to respond to this, the value of the planning exercise, the value of designing the project, that uh, validates the design and the, it is useful for reporting, it's useful for monitoring, helps you check the assumptions and the risks. So those are really the guidelines that can help you identify some of the, the value of the logical framework as it guides you to the implementation and monitoring. That is one example. The other question that you have is, I'm sorry for that, what is the value purpose of having an implementation plan? So who would you involve in or consult with in designing an implementation plan? So people will start answering based on their experience, based on what they know. And during that discussions, people are going to be coming back with some answers that are, are good. And you can build on that answer to provide feedback to the entire uh, class. It helps during the monitoring activities for reporting, to manage deviations, to take corrective actions, to make changes. So the implementation plan has a purpose and a validity and helps also people understand the need as you start moving into phases in the project to have those elements. The other questions that you can have that you have available is discuss the value of using the PAHO compendium of indicators during the project design process to identify based on the targets. People will come up with some ideas and basically the answer should align to the that there is no need to reinvent the wheel. We have already information in the organization that we can use that. It is an asset that is available for everybody and also helps consistency in terms of integrating maybe the way we are monitoring and managing our projects. Having a set of standard indicators means that those indicators have been validated, they are useful for other projects and they continue to provide that value to the project. So people will start answering that question and then you start finding the opportunities where you identify those good opportunities, those good answers and highlight those answers. So people start getting a better idea of why is, what, what is the value, why we need to use it. And that eventually uh, gets into people's uh, habit of understanding that there are benefits behind that. Especially when they see in the discussion forum that everybody is supporting that idea. And you will see that happening a lot in the discussion forums. And then people start picking up and say, I didn't know we had a companion. That could be a very good case. People don't, sometimes don't know the, the assets and, and the resources that are available in organizations. So having that as an opportunity for them to explore it and use it, it's, it's a great um, a value that they get out of the course. So how you rate those questions? Uh, here is what uh, we call the grading rubric. Basically, it's a way to organize the information based on how we see the answers coming. Uh, it's a small, right? Adelante. I'm sorry. Okay. The idea. <laughs> okay. Okay, class. The idea of consistency is that if everybody uses the same indicator, then we know that the indicator has been used in other projects and there has been validated by actual experiences. So that means that if we are monitoring project A or project B or evaluating project A or project B, there is a consistency in, in the ways the indicators has been designed and not only in terms of what you're trying to measure, but also the means of verification for that indicator. So there is no need to repeat or you know, trying to reinvent something new. So the consistency also helps the monitoring 
from the management perspective, but also in terms that you can use that indicator in, in future projects, in new projects, and you know they provide you with the data and information you needed. So there is a value that people can uh, see by using a companion of indicators that the organization is using. And another element that I might add uh, to that right now is that the companion of indicators is not a, a it's, it's a document that is constantly being updated. There's also going to be new projects, new new interventions, and out of that, there will be new indicators that are coming up that might be added to that compendium. But they provide you a very good uh, list of information that you can use, then people can then relate to that. Uh, one example that I have, and it's related to our work I'm doing right now with the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, we're working with them with another online course, the same and managing for results, is that they already have a very nice set of indicators and countries sometimes don't use them. They try to use their own indicators for whatever reason, and it becomes difficult because they try to integrate some of the data. They have a strategic framework, a very solid strategic framework with all the systems, and they're trying to integrate those data. So those indicators can be rolled up all the way up to the organizational level to see what is the impact that we have in terms of improving the health in certain areas of communities or regions in, in the world. So the idea of having a consistent companion indicator has an, an organizational value that goes beyond the benefits to the project but expands to the need to the benefits that the whole organization can have. Very good. Uh, this is the grading rubric, some guidelines to help you uh, grade the discussion forums, the answers. Uh, let me know if you can read it. Is it big enough? I will post it on the course site in the in our train the trainers. Um, uh, forum, the document that you can download and use it. So the first one, the level five, when you put somebody with five stars, the forum means that the content of the post make it clear that the participant or the student has a knowledge and understanding of the content of what we're discussing. The information they provide is useful, applicable, and it's also uh, available and teaches something else. So it's not only that they are answering, but they give you something else. So you see in, in their answers, it's not they are saying, yeah, it is valuable because of this, and there is something else that is not asked. So that it will be the kind of uh, post that will have a, a level five. Satisfactory is between four and three, is that the post shows some evidence that the student has the knowledge and understanding, the information is useful, applicable, and will be, it has some elements. So it will be like two or three degrees lower than a number five, but you see that it's a good uh, answer. Below that is that when the student posts a show that there is no evidence that they understand or, or knowledge about the, what we're trying to, to get, and the information they provide is not useful, it's not applicable to what we're trying to do. So those will be the cases where you put either a two or a one. Before you put a star two or one in that grade, my recommendation is always to give the students a second chance, send them an email or uh, contact them directly from the system, um, send them a message to let them know that uh, your process seems to be too weak and you will have a chance. One of the features that we have in the discussion forums, the Q&A, helps a lot of people uh, get a real understanding of what's happening when they post the message. That means that a student will go into the forum, they will not see the answers from anybody, they will have the questions, they will post their answer, and, and let's suppose that they write something very weak, very quickly, and they say, yes, I agree. After they post, they will have access to the system and they will be able to see the answers of other colleagues. By seeing then their answers and comparing those answers with their answer, they're going to see that they made a mistake. It's going to be pretty obvious for them to see that their answer as, yes, I agree, and the way other students are answering and the feedback you're providing them, like good answer, that's a good comment, immediately will put them in a situation in which they realize they did not meet the requirements. So 
you will give them an opportunity, you contact them, and then that's a chance for them to, to improve their posting. That will happen in the first forum. The second forum, they're going to be a little bit ahead, and so they'll know what is the standard, what is the requirement for those forums, so they'll, they'll improve their job. And that's what I see usually during the forums, is that in the first one, people, some people, maybe 20% will have those weak answers, but on the second forum, after the feedback and what they see is the standard for the forums, they'll pick up and they'll try to improve their postings. Other elements that you have in the rubric is the level of communication and procedures. Communication meaning that in general, how you see their, their contributions is consistent, maintains a positive and a, and a collegial tone in all communications. Somebody who's positive who's saying, yes, I understand and thank you very much, especially when they are commenting on the answers of other students. That's when you see them, somebody who's willing to share, providing feedback, uh, giving uh, some additional information. Below that, it's they maintain there is a good communication. And the last one is that they don't have any type of uh, engagement. They are disconnected. In the course procedures means that they the submissions and communications are consistent and they follow the course directions. And the second level is that they generally follow the course directions. And the last one is they don't follow the course directions and they are either too late or they have problems uh, answering the questions. So that is the rubric. That's a simple process that can help you understand how you can grade your, your students in the course to give you some examples about when somebody will get a, a five star, when somebody may get a four or a three star, and then when you have people with a two or a one star. Let me go back to the discussion forums. Yes, go ahead. Absolutely, go ahead. It's the same. The only difference is that from the perspective of the student, when they first log into the forum, they will not see the answers of their classmates. So once they answer and they go back into the forum, they will see what I'm showing you here. As a facilitator, you will see everything. You will see every time somebody posts, you will see all of that. You will, you will constantly be seeing the same screen that I'm seeing. So that is the screen that you will use to rate the post and the answers of all the students. Right now, this is the general type of forum, but from your perspective, as a facilitator, there will be no difference. Only when you are a student and you try to go into the site, let me show you on the new course, I go to the discussion forum and and if I I think I can switch my role here to student they will get a message no I don't see it let me post a question here just quickly so I can show you a little bit how that works and it's important because um, a lot of people will be confused. Here's instructions about how they need to do it. Let me post a question. So that this will be my first question. And I'm going to go to my documents. And let me say just, just quickly so I don't spend too much time on this. I just post that question. So that will be the question that you post with that uh, additional information that you, you can have it. Well, let me go back to this question, yeah. Let me add it there. You can add additional text. So if your question, you say if there's an opportunity for you, here's the spacing. Right here, you can add files or any documents that you need. Once you are ready, you post to the forum and the system will then 
give you the opportunity that you have 30 minutes to make any changes. So during those 30 minutes, the system uh, will wait and then will make this message part of the queue to send emails to all their students that are registered in this course. That is an important feature that to remember that every time you post a question, uh, you have those 30 minutes for editing. The system um, usually has a regular hour intervals in which collects all those messages that are in the queue and then sends them to all the uh, students. So they will get that message. So before the message sent that you find some, some mistake or some error, you have those 30 minutes to make those changes. So that will be the question that you just created on the course. You will be able from as a facilitator, you see the whole forum, there is no, no problems and people will be able to answer that. But as a student, and let me see if this will work with this setup, I can switch my role as a student in this profile. And as a student, you will get a different message. That when I click on the question, No, I don't see that. The, the, the replies that you can get from the system, if you post your answer, let me just go ahead and post the answer. The students, the next student who tries to log in will not be able to see that answer until they post their question. But as a facilitator, you will be able to see their answers anytime they post it. And that's when you will have the opportunity to, to rate it. Right now, I don't see it because uh, I'm going to return to my normal role. So once I am in the role of a facilitator, I'm going to be able to rate it. And I try to cheat on the system, but I will need to have somebody else to actually, as a, a student with the role of a student, log in and create that question. But what you will see here will be what we have in this site, which is the live site that we had in the past, where you will be able to rate that information. But in the new system, you will not see, uh, the student will not see that answer. They will get a red bar that says, you need to post your answer before seeing uh, uh, the answers posted on, on the forum. So that is a feature that you will see and that only works for students. It will not have any impact for you as a facilitator. Good question. Very good. Let's go back to our discussion forums. So you have those three questions available to you. Uh, my recommendation again is that you can start the first question on Monday and people will start answering, getting active. Depending on how you see the, the flow, then you can post the second question. You can give them a better title. I just paste a copy in that. I post it to the forum. And now you will see that we have those two questions. It gives me the message, so if I need to make any edits. And now you can see those two questions. So people will be able to go to questions one, question two, or question three. And based on that, they will be able to answer. When you click on question two, and you're still within the range of those 30 minutes to edit it, you'll be able to make changes by clicking on edit. You can delete it too. And that way you will be able to make any changes that you need. Once you complete your changes, you save them, and now they are back available. So in the next 30 minutes, the system is gonna send a message with the with the information that a new forum question has been posted and 
and people will then use the link they receive from the email to access the course and look at the questions and then post their replies. Whenever people are posting replies, there is an uh, you also have the ability the, as a facilitator that somebody posts their question and you find there is a problem or they had a, they use a wrong information. Let's look at this one, for example. And uh, you can edit. Somebody might call you say, uh, I, I posted but I made a mistake and it's too late because the 30 minutes has passed. Can you fix it? You have that option. So on every post that anybody posts, you can edit it, you can delete it. So I click on edit and it will give me access to the editor for that specific post for, for that uh, student where I can make the changes. Sometimes I see that people become a little bit creative with the formats that are available. So in this case, you can add that. Notice that the system created that additional text that says edited by your name, original submission, blah, blah, blah. That is a feature that you can either keep it or delete it, depending on what type of changes you're making. Uh, most of the time, uh, people sometimes will be this creative and they start getting their, their answers like that. So it's a distraction and it becomes a little bit uh, uh, difficult uh, when you're having a discussion forum, when you have like even worse, when people sometimes even add colors to their to their posts and something like that, it becomes, well, wow, wait a minute. And then the best way to do it, just remind people that to keep it simple and then you can uh, help them clean up that by removing or making changes to their post and make it much simpler and easy to read. So you have the ability and that's a feature because once the students miss those 30 minutes to make any changes edited, you still have access to make those changes. And once your changes are complete, you can save them. And now they will be available with the new format or changes you made on the discussion forums. Very good. So those are the basic roles and functionality that you have in that forum discussions. A lot of your work is going to be looking at the answers, providing some feedback, grading those answers, providing also a summary at the end of the discussion so that people have an understanding of what the things we're trying to do. Use the opportunity to help people get engaged. In many cases, uh, I will find somebody who has an answer, it's a good answer, but I can ask them an additional question. I can ask them, so wh how that process impacts your work? How that change or that tool will help you in your work? And they get engaged. So they will say, yes, th this tool, or the concept paper or the log frame is helping me with this in my work. I find that there are opportunities to do it. By doing that, other people can read those answers. And by doing that, they get to see that experience from another, uh, from the perspective of another person who has the same problems and challenges as they have. So that's also part of the environment where people are sharing their experiences. They are sharing their, their knowledge. And that's what you need to facilitate. That is the main role in the discussion forums. It's not just grading and saying you're correct or you're wrong. It's helping them get a common understanding, find those, those answers that are very good, uh, promote more discussions. Maybe somebody is a little bit short in their answers and somebody with a very short answer may, or just an example, I'm not picking on anybody, something like this and you say, ask them, but can you explain a little bit more detail? Well, how is that problem for you or how that situation will help you in your project? So you will find all those opportunities during the day to make it uh, more interactive. 
Uh, another recommendation, don't try to answer on any on everybody's uh, post. So you will have 20 uh, answers. You don't need to provide 20 comments to them. Uh, try to balance them. Maybe in the first forum, you pick five. In the next forum, you pick the other five um, so that everybody will always have a chance to get your feedback. And people are very receptive about that. Uh, they would like to know how they're doing in the world. So getting the feedback from the facilitator of the training, it's a, it's a good deal. It's, a, it's a, something important for them to let them know, hey, they listen to me. They think my idea is correct or they're helping me understand uh, what I'm having a trouble with. So it's important that you balance also, you don't need to spend 24 hours behind the forum and, and trying to answer everybody. So balance your, your work. That's why you will have those three forums in the, in the course so that you can then pick on, on the people that are responding on the first one, then on the, ne on the next forum, you'll be able to have another chance to, to look at what uh, other people are saying, so you give them an opportunity also to hear your feedback, and at the end, you will have the chance to look at the whole uh, summary of those discussions and thank everybody for their great comments. Uh, that's another uh, post that you can do in the news forum by the time you're closing that that discussions just to let them know that we're going to be now opening the 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 next week so that people should be able to wrap up their conversations during that uh, uh, week in the forum and complete all their conversations uh, ideally you will have those three forums but inside those forums there will be those opportunities where you will have the, the chance to ask them a little bit more questions to help them clarify their position, to help them clarify their answers. Uh, but most of the work is going to be done by, your, uh, by the students. That's a nice thing about when you start motivating people that they help each other. Uh, you're going to see a lot of those answers like we had in the, in the past that people are going to be uh, commenting they're gonna, give, they're gonna be giving some uh, good uh, feedback to the questions or the answers that are being posted. People will get a better idea and you build on that. So you see somebody who had a very good answer and you see two or three comments coming from behind, then that's an opportunity for you to, to intervene and provide some additional support and, and congratulate everybody for, for that good conversation. So that is your role as a facilitator in that discussion forum. The idea, again, is to keep people engaged with the questions, guide them through the, through the process of understanding, uh, identifying, grading those, those posts, providing them with additional uh, resources or ideas, and then wrapping up all those conversations that you have at the end so that everybody comes out of that with a, a good understanding of what we're trying to discuss. Very good. The other activity that we have in that week is the exercise. Uh, that means that the students will need to submit a written work. Uh, it's due before Sunday at midnight, so they still have the weekend if they are having problems or they are too busy. Uh, your job is once people uh, upload the, the exercises is to download those exercises to your computer, to your folder. And try to keep a folder where you identify each course and the number of exercise. Go to the exercises, read them, and provide feedback, and then grade each exercise using the rubric. So the exercise is a Word document that if you took the course, you're all familiar with that. But we made some changes. We changed the questions so they reflect more about the information of the case study. So people will have the case study as a background, as a reference, as a context to answer a lot of these questions. Uh, my recommendation is that on Monday or Tuesday, you remind people and you try to remind them during the week that don't forget the exercise, it's due on Sunday if you try to do it ahead. And ideally, people will download the document at the beginning of the, the week. And as they start making progress during the discussion forums, they'll go back and they try to answer those questions one by one. They don't need to do everything in one day. But the practice is that every day they might answer two questions so that by Friday or by the weekend, they complete the work and they can upload it. So they, they don't need to rush. That is one practice that you can also uh, tell people in the news forum when you're giving them some 
tips or advice on how to organize their time to manage uh, the workload on this course. Uh, this exercise is a Word document. They will download it and then will upload it into the system. That is the screen that the students will have when they upload and then you will grade that. So every time somebody grades or uploads the information, they will see the following. Let me go back to my screen where I have from the previous course our exercise. By the way, this is the exercise for that week. They are new questions. They are now related to the uh, case study. We have the role of the grant coordinator who is then facing some challenges or issues and there are questions that drive the type of um, understanding that people will get by the, when they answer that question. So we have in the document six questions. They are simple and an additional bonus questions that you can use them to grade them and add additional uh, grade to them. So this is the Word document that they will download. And once they are ready, they will upload it into the case exercise. And from your perspective as a facilitator, you will see this list. You will see the number of participants in the course, how many have submitted the course. You will see drafts, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, how many need grading, because you can start grading the moment people are, are start uploading. Somebody uploaded on Friday, you can go and grade it, or you can wait until Monday to grade all of them. It's up to you will give you some information about the due dates. And here's the link. It says view grade all submissions. You click on that and it will give you access to a, a table where you will see all the submissions from all the students. So here it is. You can then organize them by first name or, or name, but you will see the table with information of the name of the student, the status, submitted for grading, meaning if it's green, they submit it on the time. There will be a space, right now it's, it's already graded, where you can place your grade, uh, the time where they modified their submission, and here is the document. Most of the time what I do is that I right click on it and do save link as, and that way you are downloading that document to your hard drive where you can then read it and based on that information, on the answers, you can grade it. When you're ready to grade the, the exercise, you click right about here on that icon that looks like a pen. You click on it and it will give you access to a screen for that specific student. It will then summarize all the information they, when they submit it, the due dates, the assignments. Here's again the document, so you can also do a right click and save as back to your computer. This is the space where you put your grade. Uh, uh, the grading uh, tables is explained in the exercise. It's usually it's, uh, 60, 80, 90, 100. And in, we also have a rubric to help you manage that. And this is the space where you put your comments. And your comments are going to be based on, on the answers that they provided. Uh, they are pretty, good work, here's my feedback, good answer, yes, you're correct, you provide it, or in the case that somebody didn't uh, have a correct answer, you, you try to give them the, the uh, no, uh, you, you, you're, you're, or your answer was too short, or it's not correct, and you provide some feedback there. Eventually, once you complete one course, and you have your list of what is a right answer or a correct answer, basically, you just paste and copy and you modify this text based on what people are doing. So you don't need to do an extensive work and very personalized work to all the students because it will take you a lot of time to do that. You create a template where you have the good answers and based on the answers that they provide you, then you modify that. So you say, yeah, that is correct or no, it's incorrect. You should add it more uh, or you should or the log frame should have this or the assumption should have been this you provide that feedback comment then you save 
or show next. When you do that, it will save that information and the student then uh, will get a message saying that their work has been graded by the teacher. And then it will show you the next one. Here's an example of somebody who didn't present their work, so it's, the assignment is overdue. And then you can use their email to contact them to say, I am, I, uh, you're still late on your work, uh, we, you still have some time, if they're still a little bit late, maybe it's on Saturday or, or something, but when it's ready, it means that it's overdue. And the rule that we have in the training is that work that is late will be graded on a scale of 80, not on a scale of 100. So that means the maximum grade that you can give to that person when they present the court, their exercise late will be 80 points not 100. We do that so that people understand there is a penalty that you are uh, providing your, your work late uh, out of respect of people who work and they try to meet that deadline. Basically, that is the fair uh, rule. Uh, there will be some cases where somebody might have a, a difficult situation either for work or for health that they cannot meet that deadline, they might be late. You can provide that flexibility and then you can, it's up to you whether you want to grade it with a hundred. Uh, my recommendation is they provide a valid uh, excuse, meaning health or work. I give them an extra day, Monday or Tuesday, to present their work and I can still grade it uh, over a hundred. What is important is that they do their work. That is that's the important thing. That they do, they go to the effort of, of answering those questions, providing their answers, uploading the course and trying to get some feedback. That is part of the learning and that's more important for me in, in any case to trying to meet a deadline. But uh, there are always going to be people who are late, who, will, who missed it, who forgot, and they, they try to do their work and, and will not do it. They will lose points if they don't complete that work. Once you complete your gradings, uh, you save all the changes and people will get a message uh, where they will get uh, information about the grade received and the feedback. That information is also available in their grading. So when a student goes to the course and they click on grades, they will be able to see that uh, feedback. So in the case of our friend here, when they click on their grades, they will be able to see the grade they got for that exercise, 100, and the feedback. So they will understand the, what they did right, what they did wrong, and based on that, they will, they will have uh, opportunities to improve in the next exercise. Let's go back to the presentation. The rubric for the uh, exercise, it's basically the same concept uh, for a five star means they get a hundred. That will be the grade for a hundred and it's not a uh, hundred, it's, it's the, the other ones will be 80 or 60. You can pay 80, 60 or 70 and then the, the lowest grade. Most of the time, uh, if somebody's going to be getting a 20 or a zero grade means that they haven't done their work. So you don't need to worry about the last column. The first one is that they, the work is delivered before the set time. That's another good point. Uh, the, demonstrates a good understanding of the issues. And the questions are answered and exemplified with their own situations. That is important because they need to explain it also in their own terms. How did they see it and how they answer that question. Uh, and they follow the directions of the course to them to submit the document. They demonstrate a mastery of the key concepts and the ideas and the language that is spoken. The second one is that it's delivered on the stated date. They demonstrate understanding. The questions are answered properly. They are capable of using good examples. And the submission channel follows those directions. And the last one is there is no understanding of the issues. They are not answered. The knowledge or experience of the participation is that they don't demonstrate and that they learn the concepts are applied, maybe it's just a paste and copy of whatever information they had from, from the resources on the course. That's something else that's going to be pretty obvious when they just paste and copy uh, information from another document. The idea is that they need to write in their own terms how they perceive that answer and how they can then demonstrate that they know based on what they learned in the course. 
Again, this document will also be available for you and, and that will be a process for you to go through the process of understanding how to grade these exercises. I have some homework for you. I'm going to, in the discussion forum, I'm going to play some examples of, of, of answers and you need to reply with a text uh, with the rating you will give to the answers process with, with the five stars or one star. So I'll have some examples in our discussion forum, something like I just created here, but I will reply with uh, my uh, a couple of different answers. In the answer, uh, uh, you, you might rate it, but I need to I, I need you to explain me in the reply when you rep when you click reply on that answer, uh, why you're giving a five or why you're giving a four to that um, answer. So you're gonna see, like for example here, answer. So you you go there, you reply, and you say. It's a little bit slow. I say one star. I'm sorry. One star. This answer is too short. So I'm gonna go to my to the old course. I'm gonna give you some examples of some good and bad answers, and based on that, you will then. Do a little bit of a practice on, on the forums just to use some of that and we'll see how the rest of the classmates and everybody who's on this training will will compare some of your your uh, reviews and some of your gradings and then you just post to the forum. So that's a little bit of an exercise that we have available for you. Now don't worry much about how you're going to be reviewing the exercises when you might not feel 100% comfortable about the concepts and the content of the course. Remember that in the we're going to have our first course with this new version and I'm going to be helping you, I'm going to be co-facilitating with you on that first, both the English and the Spanish versions. I'm going to be helping you. So that means that I'm going to be helping you when you're rating those courses. I'm going to give you some guidelines and an example of what are the good answers and good questions and what are the bad answers so that then you create your own template. So out of the first course that we will have, you will have your template about how to rate and how to have the right answers. Right now, the, the questions that we have for the exercise that they're going to come from the first course of the students and I'm going to grade them, we're going to grade them together based on the answers that we see, I'm going to tell you, yeah, this is a good answer, it, it, it meets the requirements of a hundred words, they understand what they're doing. So you will have an example. Another thing that I do also at, uh, in some courses and we, can, and we can apply that is that once the students complete their exercise, I can select the two or three that from, from your perspective are the best ones, the ones that got the best grade. You take out the name, you delete the name, you save it as a PDF, and you post it into the course saying, here's a good example, so that people can have then um, uh, an idea of what are the good examples for an answer. That is another option so that people don't are left too much in the in a vacuum understanding, yeah, I didn't get a good grade on this question number two, but I don't understand why. But if you give an example of what you were looking for in terms of the answer, that is one solution. The other solution that I do is that I also uh, post the right answers in the discussion forum on the news forum. It's, it's a message that I send to everybody saying, uh, thank you everybody, you did a good job. Uh, everybody got the answers correct. Uh, some of you were a little bit confused in some of the answers. So here's a summary of what are the correct answers for everybody so they will be able to, to read that. And that's another way to reinforce their knowledge by understanding where they did wrong and what is the right answer so they can compare again. So don't worry about that process about how we're going to be grading, how do I know if that's the right thing. Uh, we're going to build that knowledge 
database kind of, uh, of answers for on the first course when I help you facilitate the first uh, English and the first Spanish and course. So that will be the experience that we uh, are going to be running together. You're going to be, uh, whoever's going to be uh, teaching that first course, that's going to be your first uh, 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 experience uh, facilitating the course. Uh, hopefully we will have uh, the rest of the facilitators working kind of as guests they will not interact in the course but they will see the process they will be able to log in into the course see the forums see the the dynamics and the discussions and start learning also from the same experience we will keep that train of trainers forums visible only for the facilitators where we can then exchange some ideas and comments so once you're logging into the course you're gonna ask a question saying i'm not sure how to go ahead Perfecto. Oh. Perfect. We'll do that. Uh, let's close right now because practically that was the end of my, my session. The last one was questions. <laughs> so basically we are, we're done. Uh, but we'll pick up some of these concepts in, in tomorrow's session. Thank you very much again for your participation. And I'll, I'll send you an email later with some uh, feedback in terms of our homework. Thank you, Patricia. Chao, chao. Gracias a todos.